welcome to the Industry Angel Podcast. We hear from the best business minds across the globe, entrepreneurs, social influencers, marketing mavens, and sales rock stars. We've got them all. Here comes your weekly dose of inspiration with your host, Ian Farah. Welcome to episode 218 of the Industry Angel. It's great to be back with you. Uh, especially after a difficult couple of weeks. My kids caught COVID and then the inevitable happened. I got it and I was affected quite badly. I lost a lot of weight, like five and a half kilograms. I just felt terrible. But back in the office today though, hopefully it'll have no lasting effects. And i um, taking it easy as my breathing was quite affected. So I'm back and I hope this finds you fitting well and restrictions are lifting here in the UK. Maybe that is uh, a bit easier for you. Maybe life's a bit easier. So then, today, this episode was live streamed across our multiple channels. It was great fun. If you do catch our lives, be sure to let me know you're there. I love shouting you guys out. Uh, it's, It's really fun. And this was a fantastic episode. We've got the founder of Ogle the only patented building system in the world that uses recycled plastic. And our guest joins us fresh out of the Dragon's Den, or Shark Tank for our US friends, and he tells us the interesting journey that Ogle have been on. So welcome to the industry angel, Gary Giles. Good morning, Gary. How are you? Good morning. Yeah, all good, all good this morning. Thanks. Yeah, it's on this lovely day. It's got to be said, it's a lovely day. It, it is. I caught you earlier on, Gary, and I noticed you were on brand, but I can't see that now. So you're going to have to give us a little bit of a demonstration. Oh, demonstration of what brand? You, ha- you had a t-shirt on, didn't you? Did you have an Ogle? I did, yeah. Yeah, there you go. There a... you go. Come on. A lot of people still don't know why we're called Ogle, but I can tell you. Some people know, some people don't. But... Well, I, I tell you what it is. There's our Paul here. Look, Paul Lancaster. Love all the Ogle products. So looking forward to watching this. Yeah. So people do know about Ogle. Yeah. Let's have a look. Who else have we got here? Good morning. Here to get more and more inspired by the Ogle team. No pressure. None at all. None at all. Gary there from Arsenay. Hope I've said that right. Uh, who else have we got? We've got Ben Gash there. Hope everyone's having a great start of the day. Super sunny, super warm, just like what we see. There you go. Look, he's gone for the plug. AACS Limited. Yeah, that's good to see. That's what it's all about. It's all, it's all about networking and sort of what people do. Ah, uh, Justin, like Justin, yes. We love Justin. Justin's been excited for this one. Yeah. He's been asking for the links and everything. He, he's really looking forward to this one. And Paul there as well. Yeah. Great to hear of your success in Dragon's Den. Yeah. As we work with the, the Materials Process and Institute. In the early days, yes. Early the, days. He was checking with us early days. It was, yeah, brilliant. Guys, you know. Well, I, t- I tell you what it is, you know, what an, an appearance. That must be the pinnacle of, of the marketing career. Yeah. You being on today's business talks. Well, I'll take that as a, I'll take that as a, as a, as a, as a good sign. Yeah, it was, it was yeah, it was, uh, it's a... You didn't think I was talking about Dragon's Den, oh, did you? Well, I'm talking about today, oh, mate. Yeah, today, yeah. this is the <laughs> yeah, talk. Yeah, sorry, you're right. Yeah, so I'm just, <laughs> sort of yourself and the guys from Far North. It's, you know, <laughs> I'm, 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 so, you know, Dragon's Den was cool, but now I know I've made it, you know. Anyway, go and tell me about Ogle because you said there before not many people know or, or why it's called. Well, obviously, everybody sort of knows it's a building product, that sort of thing, you know. Sort of, uh, but sort of, I have more fun with the name of the company than I do with anything else. You see, you know, sort of, uh, and you'd be amazed, be, be amazed the number of people who don't know. I mean, I, 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 I mean, do you know where the name of the company comes from? I've got no idea, mate. No idea. Right. Well, do you want to play a game? Come on then. Come on, Ronald. Nobody type in because we're playing a game with you. Two dicks in, two dicks. Mind, it's Friday. I'm tired. I've had COVID. I have got the foggiest head possible at the moment. That's what COVID's done to me. I don't know if I'm coming or going. So I'm getting all the excuses in now. Right. Okay. Right. We're gonna play. We're gonna play a game. Right. And you, as a as a marketing person, should should be quite good at this. Right. Okay. Three, two, one, game. Okay. Number three. Right. So first question: What is it made of? Plastic. Good. Excellent. What is it in essence doing? It's a barrier to build. Yes. So it's plastic. Mm-hmm. So it's keeping the elements out and helping you build a structure. Yeah. So it's plastic and it builds. Okay. Mm-hmm. All right. Last bit. Okay. Let's, 
I'm sure it's just one screen on here. Can you sort of see which way does the arrow point? Um, all right, okay, it's pointing, it's pointing backwards. Yeah, so read it backwards. Read the word backwards. Lego, oh my word. Yeah, you'd be amazed at the number of people who don't get that. I've never seen that. Did, 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 did Lego know? Do we have to keep that quiet? No, no, that's, that's, I, I, would, I would love Lego to sort of uh, come at this because we've, we, we actually sort of spoke to a lot of, um, we spoke to a, a branding attorney sort of saying, look, will we get into problems with this? And they just looked at it and went, the rules are very, very simple. So sort of if the average person thinks that you are trying to pass yourself off as Lego, right, okay. then you're in trouble. Wow. If you're not, and I've just proven there that you didn't know, and a lot of people just don't don't know. So so we, we passed the acid test almost. Excellent stuff. There you go. So we can use this in a court of law. Exactly. That's the idea. I'm not the average man, though. I'm a bit silly. So <laughs> look, look, at that. look at this. Look, who would have thunk it? Everyone's stunned. Who knew? Well, people didn't know. It's just weird, isn't it? Anyway. So let's go back to the early days then. Was Ogle always Ogle or Gary? Do you know when you're starting a business and you're coming up with all these different names and stuff? What was your first name? It was always pretty much... Ogle, was yeah, it? sort of, we knew, yeah, because obviously that, that was one, obviously one, an inspiration. Although, although how the product works is completely different to Ogle. It's different to Lego, should I say. I mean, I'm just obviously a little bit there. Yeah, it's completely different. It's, um, it was almost like, you know, plastic building. Okay, well, what a plastic building, Lego. So, so it, was, it was always that name, really. You know, I mean, the limited company's a diff different name, but, uh, but yeah, it's cause, cause because Ogle was taken as a limited company name, and so we, so we took a different limited company name. But apart from that, yeah, it's... Uh, it was always pretty much over. So thinking about early days, okay, how did the concept come around? What what made you think about this? Yeah, well, a bit a bit of a long story, but sort of mm -hmm. I come from a family of builders. Uh, I'm I'm not a builder, I'm an accountant. So sort of back in the early seventies, when I sort of when so we should say say health and safety and building sites was a little bit more lax. And being a five and six year old, I used to end up at building sites moving bricks at a time. My dad, you know, and doing this sort of thing, you know. And he said a great thing, which has stuck with me and really was the, without realising it, was the solution to, to the problem that we do, which is there's only, two, there's only two problems you have to solve in building. How you build the same thing, the same shape, up and down and side to side. Lego solves the up and down bit. Sort of, you know, you can join Lego, Lego up and down. But if you think about it, you can't join two bits of Lego side to side, can you? You've got to have a piece above it or a piece below it. And that was the start of the whole journey. And then we sort of worked with a design house in... Um, in Newburn, in Western Newcastle, sort of, uh, called E3 Design, who, uh, sort of, have, who have been fantastic and worked with us all the way through on this, you know, sort of, and are, are part of the team now, really. And so we're, we're all part of the same, the same process almost to a certain degree. So I came up with, a, with a, the idea of an L shape. So an L shape clicks into an L shape, makes a box shape, which is quite cool. And then without going too far into the clever bit of what we do is, is what we actually do is we actually offset the back to the front, which means that we can sort of build long lengths by where there's a joint, offsetting the, the front of the joint with the back of the joint. Does that sort of make sense? Sort of, uh, mm -hmm, yeah, mm -hmm. so, and then up and down, it's dead straightforward. It just clicks them together and just see the screws or you can use a, um, a piece that goes in between it, you know, dead straightforward. It works, you know, sort of uh, simple design. That was the inspiration, if you like, sort of, of how we sort of moved forward with it. The funny thing is, we never, we sort of, a lot of people sort of say it's a building block. It's actually never, ever a building block. So sort of, um, we never build blocks out of it. The only other, so because in, in building a block builds a course and a course builds a wall mm -hmm. put, put cones on it makes an enclosure and you put a roof and a, and a floor on it and, make, and it makes a room so what we do is we don't build blocks we build courses oh right okay you know, yep. so, uh, mm -hmm. that, that's the idea is sort of you know so so and because you're only building a course you sort of it's, it's like a it's almost like, like a box with no signs on it you know and you just keep building that length weight and then you cut, cut a 45 degree and you turn it around a corner and you do whatever with it you know and that's what we got the patent on. So we've all been in the pub and someone's had an idea and they've kind of banged on about this idea. Yeah. But ideas are just ideas until you execute on them. Yeah, too right. When did you execute on this idea? Uh, it started, I can tell you the exact time. It was February the 4th, quarter to four <laughs> in 2015. Yes, 2015. Yeah, so that's sort of... And what it was, it was um, an old boss of mine sort of came back to us uh, and they just bought a machine to make a, a polypropylene wrapping around um, render for, for walls and that sort of thing. You know, the idea is that mm -hmm. you can keep the render outside and it doesn't go off like it would with a paper bag. And it, what he sort of said was, he said, well, if worse comes to worse, he says, sort of in, in the whole business fails, he says, what we can do is we can um, make sandbags. I went, sandbags, you know, sort of, 
you know, so at the time, the sort of where we worked, which was down sort of near to Thirsk, was suffering quite badly with floods. And it was like sort of, is there, is it sort of, I just asked that thing about flood defences. How can I build a flood defence? That, that was the inspiration, is how can I build a flood defence? Uh, and that's where it started, sort of. And then the idea moved on and moved on. And then all of a sudden we thought, well, okay, so we got packing cases and we cut packing cases to try and see how they would work by packing them laterally. But what we hadn't realised was the, the problem we were always trying to solve wasn't the up and down bit, it was the side to side bit. Because we were taking packing cases and we are cutting triangles out of them and trying to put them sideways on and, you know, and it, it was never really going to work, if I'm being honest about it, you know. And then, like I say, so one of the guys at E3 came up with this idea of an L shape, turns into an L shape. And then the offsetting idea came out six months later as to how you offset it, you know. So, so yeah, that was an idea from a pub, but I'll caveat that and sort of say, so that, that was the big idea. I always sort of claimed to have, have had two very other big ideas, but years ago I never executed on them. So this is my third time looking. And those other big ideas, when I started using the internet, which for me was about 1993, 1994, around there, and that's obviously very, very early days, dial up, all that sort of stuff, you know. I always sort of said, sort of, the, the big, the first, one of the first big things on the internet is going to be bingo. 1993, now if you look when Foxy Bingo and all these other bingo companies started, they were all, didn't sort of take place till the early sort of 2000s or late 1990s, you know. And I think I, I should have done something with that. That was a great idea. You know, and then I had another idea to do with before you had smartphone technology in the in the early two thousands. It was like sort of you know every, every, everything was text back in those days. You know, sort of and it was like sort of I thought well you know sort of if you want if, if you're in a strange city or a strange town, well, you know sort of if you had like a you know sort of, and, you, and you typed wanna takeaway, and if you also sort of, bear in mind this before you had sort of real websites before you had smartphone technology as we have now. You know, you text wanna taxi or wanna pizza or wanna whatever. If that went out, and it obviously sort of it knew graphically where you were, if it went outwards and sort of said a taxi company, then then phoned you to sort of say, yes, we are the nearest taxi, taxi company to you, to you right now. We will send a taxi to where you are. Simple technology. It's what, it's what Uber do now with smartphones, but, but before a smartphone, didn't do anything with it. Well, I tell you what it is, Gary. I don't want a taxi. What I want is a home office. That's what you want. Yes. Well, one of home office. Well, come and see us. What can you do then? So, who is this? Who's the customer segment, Gary? So, we, we we've got the modular system. Yeah. Have you got Have you got kind of off the shelf products then? So we've got a pod one, pod two, pod three, that sort of stuff. Yeah. I mean, so what what we're doing initially is we think the, the big market is home offices, garden rooms. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because obviously with, with COVID and everything else. I mean, okay, people are now going back to work, but there's a huge thing now whereby people have had a taste of working from home, you know, so, and people are now looking at it and going, well, you know something, do I really need to be in the office five days a week? The, obviously, the, the new in phrase is hybrid working. Hybrid, the, the phrase hybrid working didn't really exist sort of a year and a half ago. It exists now, you know, so sort of people are sort of now wanting a work life balance, but at the same time, you know, sort of companies have a duty of care where they can't have somebody sort of sat at, sat at the kitchen desk or sat on the sofa, you know, getting bad backs. Uh, and equally, sort of people do want to have a feeling of going to work, you know. So if you've got that halfway house, like a, a dedicated office in the garden, very, very small or very, very large, depending on the size of your garden and your, in your apartment, that's what we sort of believe is the, the first, our first, um, first product, really. Yeah, sort of, so, so what would, that's what we launched, really, to begin with. And it's gone a little bit mad since Dragon's Den, if I'm being honest with you. It's, uh, we thought we'd get, we'd get a few inquiries afterwards, and so far it's about sort of... Six hundred thousand pounds worth of inquiries, you know. <laughs> wow, a bit more than I thought, you know. It, it's interesting because we're on Dragon's Demo, but let's go there. They always say, you know, you're there for a couple of hours, and you know, it's much longer than the ten minutes or whatever a clip you ever yeah. see on, on on the BBC. When I was watching it as well last week, I was I was wanting to ask questions around like the durability, you know, like the yeah. the weight of it. How does it stay down from the wind and the elements? And, the, yeah. and they didn't really go into those bits of technicalities, or did they? But we didn't see that. They did a little bit of, I mean, okay. it's, so, so, I mean, of it's light, but mm-hmm. it's not, it's not like, because when you say, say, say polystyrene, people think, think the white flaky stuff, which it is, but it's all crushed down. So what you think of the white flaky, what's called expanded polystyrene, it's actually only 5% polystyrene, 95% air, whereas this is 60% polystyrene, 40% air. It makes a big difference, you know. It doesn't blow away anyhow, because it's, we, we've, we've had one unanchored. Okay. For a year, set up, you know. So, but what, 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 what we can do is we, we can sort of we can still sort of screw to the ground if we want to using what's called ground screws, you know, for, for like larger, larger developments, you know, because uh, a big thing that it does sort of solve because it's a, effectively a, a wall and a roof and a floor. We know at some point in time, and it's something that, that we are going to investigate probably 
about two, three years' time is we're, we're going to build houses out of it. Okay, you know, cool. Build houses out of it because, because I'm not sort of saying we're going to build high-rise flats out of it, I mean, that sort of nature, but we're going to sort of do away with the, the world's need for concrete, you know, concrete foundations. You know, so sort of we will use some concrete, but, uh, yeah, so we, sort of, we see it being a, a true housing solution longer term. Oh, so I, I, I'm going to have to throw this on screen. I'm, I'm, I'm giggling away here in the background. 95% air, similar to Ian's head. <laughs> so thanks well, for that. Thanks. That's a little, that's a little bit unfair. It's, it's probably about 85%. It's probably more. <laughs> <laughs> Good, everyone. Join us this morning. Thanks for thanks for coming in. People oft, often pop in within 10 minutes of it starting. You know, yeah, you, yeah. you just come out of bed. You know, they, they, they just roll yeah. out of bed, these people. Right. Didn't Deborah Meaden know say something about polystyrene that polystyrene wouldn't be around for a while now? We're getting rid of it. And then what are you going to do? The truth is, it's just. just Partly right, but mostly wrong, unfortunately. I mean, sort of since the program, we've had the number of polystyrene foam companies who've formed us, as I say. You realise, different reason, sort of the nicest possible way, doesn't really know the industry very well. Okay. Doesn't know what's happening, you know, because the, the, they are trying to find certain solutions around polystyrene, which is the, there's a um, thing called mycelium, which is um, like a plant based, grown packaging solution. In practical terms, it's it's nowhere near ready. It's, it's, a, it's not ready for market. B, it probably never will be ready for market because you could to grow it rather than make it. And also the fact that although we took packaging on with us, everybody thinks this sort of polystyrene isn't just packaging. It's the inside, it's the inside lining of your fridges and freezers. It's in cars, it's in buildings, it's it's all the old CD cases that I used to have many, many years ago, that was polystyrene. You know, coat hangers. You know, sort of, are we, are we going to do with coat hangers? How are, we, how are we going to hang our clothes up? You know, it's all, so really the source of raw material, uh, which they didn't, didn't really sort of show on the den, that's our real source of raw material longer term, you know. And also the fact that, you know, in the nicest possible way, you know, we make 24 million tonnes of this stuff a year globally. So we aren't going to go to nothing overnight, are we? You know. <laughs> So thinking about the likes of those stats there, Gary, that, that you just threw at me, did you have that ready for going into the, the den to pitch? Did you have? Did you think about it? Yes, we did. So we, covered, we sort of covered most of it. But of course, in the nicest possible way, so you've got to remember, sort of, it's not an investment programme, it's an entertainment programme. Yeah. You know, so, so what gets discussed in there, sometimes the, the, after the BBC are making an entertainment programme, so they're going to sort of, that's a little bit technical, a little bit not of interest in the 15 minute view that we do while while we're on there, you know, so it gets gets cut in, cut in the edit. In the, and then the two hours that are on there, which, which goes down to like 10, 15 minutes, you know, sort of that ends up on the, on the studio floor, you know, for the floor. You know. Yeah. But were you phased at all? Uh, no, overall, I wasn't. The only <laughs> time I was a little bit phased is because I'm a little bit claustrophobic. Okay. Uh, and what we do is they film everything twice. And then it's sort of saying, right, now we're going for real. So you go into the lift and everything else. And we were held in the lift for, and I said, so you've been there for 30 seconds and then the doors will open and you're in, you're in the studio. So we're in the lift and the lift doors didn't open after 30 seconds. And then the lift doors didn't open after 45 seconds. And the lift door didn't open after a minute. And, then, and it was like, I'm getting more and more tetchy. I feel like I'm in, this, in this enclosed space with this glass screen, <laughs> this perfect screen between me and, me and Alan Watson. I saw that, yeah. And, and I know that, that obviously sort of the lift, the lift's all taken care of. And I know that they're on the other side of that door. And it's like, if those doors don't open in a minute, I'm going to have to pull those doors open and get out somehow, you know, because it was, I was really sort of getting sort of claustrophobic, you know. But the, the doors opened, I was okay, I walked in there, and of course, the studio itself is very, very dark. So it's like sort of, it's like, all, you, all you've got is these, is these five people in front of you with, with, white, with white lights shining down there. It's like, mm. this, is, this is very strange. This is not a normal Wednesday morning. Sounds like that was a bit of a sales technique that day to get you worried before you went in. <laughs> yeah. I think so. You know, sort because of, once again, I mean, sort of the, you know, the BBC, you know, they're making an entertainment programme, you know, sort of, uh, so having, having me a little bit, a little bit head up is probably, <laughs> it looks good on TV. You know. Let's go back to the, afterwards then, you, you mentioned there was like half a million quids worth of sales inquiries that have come in. Yeah. What, how, did, how does that look? Was that just people like you and I just thinking, I want one for the, the back garden or it was like, I want 10 for a, a street that I'm building or? Yeah, I mean, basically, it's, it's people wanting things for the back gardens. I mean, I mean, the emails came through anyhow, and there was loads of like, sort of, you know, really love what you're doing, and just, just, sort of, it's just really nice what you're doing, and that's all happened to be, which is lovely anyhow. Very, very few negative things, you know. So it's, it's lots of home offices, lots of garden rooms, lots of that sort of, that sort of product, you know. Sort of, and what it's, what it's not included is the fact that we've also had inquiries from larger concerns. Because it's sort of um, we've been contacted by sort of people who are involved with Centerpoint, the, the the homeless charity. Because they're looking and going, 
this solves this could solve a lot of our temporary accommodation for homeless shelter. Mm, okay. Know? So, so we're having that conversation a bit more next week. We've been contacted by Eco Attractions, who run the Eden Project and they run Kew Gardens, and they've got a, they've got a need in one of their concerns in Essex, you know, sort of whether they like sort of um, temporary kiosks and that sort of thing, you know, and and also and we haven't even quoted those yet, you know, sort of we haven't even had those massive conversations, you know, so so yeah, it all looks very positive. Well, we've got some questions coming in. Is that you clicking a pen, Mister? Oh, yeah, I've put, I've put it back yet. Yeah, I'm going to put it in the yeah. pen. <laughs> We've got a couple. <laughs> we've got a couple of questions coming in here. Yeah, so sure. Bryn has threw up. Are you recycling any of the old poly stuff? Yes, the, the building that we took into Dragons Den that was fully recycled. That's fully recycled material. Um, it was partly waste from um, the factory, partly old fridges. That's what that that we, that we took into Dragons Den with us. It was quite funny because what, what we sort of say is we sort of what we believe about material content about eighty percent recycled polystyrene. You know, and Devin Regan goes ah. So is that building there fully recycled? And we went, actually, no, it's not. She went, I knew it. So we went, that building's actually 100% recycled. And it was like, oh, okay, yeah. So, so we so we kept it quiet on that one, maybe a little bit. <laughs> and uh, we've got one here. How do you plumb it in as in a feed for cold water? That's from Chris. Yeah. The way so I think of it, really, Chris, is um, we actually sort of do the, the electrical fit and the um, water feeds as because it's a hollow wall effectively we, we do all that all that all those fixes and run all those pipes as we build the wall in a, in, a, in a normal house you would you would build the brick walls and then you'd get the electricians to come in and the plumbers to come in and then they, they, they do their first fix and their second fix as sort of you know but for us we do the whole thing at the same time you know so you, you, you plumb it you wire it as you build it i was just going to throw, throw this book from eddie there obviously eddie's a good friend of yours he's calling me giles yeah yeah, no. Yeah, yeah. Jazz. Yes, uh, Mr. Jazz to you, sir. <laughs> yeah. You'll have to uh you'll have to respond with Eddie's surname though. I know, yeah, yes, it's it's it's, it's all I'll sort of say about Eddie's name. It's a lot it's a lot of points in the scrabble. <laughs> well, you know, chess is his game, friend of the show, our oh, Eddie. <laughs> um, and what he's asking is there, will you be selling this product only as complete sets or are and I'm guessing he's gonna go say something like, Can you just buy all the bits and create whatever you want? A bit like Lego. Yeah, I mean, so yeah, I mean, we're going to market to begin with sort of completely, oh, coming back to small sets, as you say, brief. We're starting off well, sort of our, our guys will go and fit to begin with, just so that we have probably sort of master the process, if you like, you know. And then the plan is probably sort of later on next year, then we'll sort of make it more of a self build, if you want to be a self build, you know. But uh, it, at the minute, it's, it's a advanced DIY job. You know, so so what we're trying to do is is, is, is simplify the whole process, uh, which we'll only sort of learn by building more and more units ourselves, and then document that and obviously do YouTube videos, that sort of thing, before we sort of release it as a as a self assembly model. Excellent, Chris is clearly interested. I think you might have one over at one more than two brew. Yeah, um, he's asking lots of questions here. They're getting very technical. He wants to know where the cold feed's coming from. <laughs> Well, you you would sort of plumb it in, in the same way as you have a water feed coming in from a normal normal house. Exactly the same principle. Nothing changes. It would come up from the floor from the wall. You know? yeah. And he he's got the audacity to say that my head's full of air. I mean, it's it's pretty simple, Chris. You know, come on, just get with it. Maybe he wants to plumb in uh, his ale. I know that he brews. That would be pretty cool. Well, funnily enough, sort of, I'll, I'll, I'll have a little bit Chris about that because, uh, yeah, sort of, we sort of see it being great for that sort of something like Chris's environment where he needs, he needs a clean environment to work, you know, because it's ideal for, for, for his sort of uses, really, because you know, it's a to, to wipe clean surface, to wipe clean wall, you know, great, great for that sort of thing, really, you know. Actually, so in, in, in terms of wipe clean, I mean, wow, look what we've been through this this last year in terms of, you know, people cleaning and sanitizing and everything, that sort of stuff. So could it lend itself to, you know, outside of the home? It, are, are we looking at more maybe industrial uses of this? Yeah, so we're, we're, we're looking at that, that as well, really. We're looking at it. I mean, so we have had very tentative inquiries from a very large organization to do with health in the, in the UK. I, can't, I, I won't say any more than that. Okay. <laughs> Uh, the three initials, that's all I'll say, you know. So, yes, yeah, so we are looking at that as we sort of go along because recognise the fact that it's got multiple, multiple uses, you know, and it doesn't have to be temporary, you know. I mean, that's, that's the one thing with, with it being polystyrene. I mean, people think of polystyrene, it won't last five minutes. Mm -hmm. Realistically, it'll last probably about at least 50 years. 
well, sort of, if, if, if I was to take this piece of polystyrene and throw it in the ocean, it would last 500 years before it would break down. Wow. You know, because it's plastic. You know, so, I mean, I mean, the court air was sort of used, which, which they didn't use on Dragon's Den. That was part of their pitch. It's like, so, you know, we humans make the most throwaway of items out of the most permanent materials. It's a very, you know, plastic is a very permanent material. Mm. So if you're going to recycle it, recycle it in something that's going to last a long time. And there's not many things that last longer than a wall, apart from a, a reusable wall. Well, You've got a sale there. Uh, Chris is going to take ten. <laughs> um, obviously, I broke at that deal. So the yeah, of course. I think that's that's a father from me and, and about uh, fifteen pints from Chris. I think by the sounds of it. <laughs> You're joking. I've had three pints out of Chris in three years. I tell you. <laughs> um, thinking about that, then that that kind of licensing model, that franchisee thing. You know, how how does the business model look, Gary, going forward? Is it all direct Ogle or? You know, could you partner with with other organisations to resell and? Yeah, I, th- I think what we're going to do initially, initially, it's direct sale. But we recognise the fact that you know, as the business business grows, there's a higher model there that we can sort of what, you know, enough cash in the bank to sort of say, let, let, let's make something for higher. And uh, there's a higher model there. There's also the fact that sort of you know, sort of because of, of our, our patents cover us for US, all of Europe, and China, we can sort of take up what we what we learn in the UK and sort of say we can sort of find a, a licensee in France, Nordic countries, wherever, and they take it and go, okay, right, well, we will, you know, we will take it on, on board to sell the yoga products over here, and we'll make it over here, because it's a bit daft, a bit daft sort of taking raw material from Sweden and bringing it back to the UK to make it and then send it back to Sweden. It kind of sort of defeats the whole sort of ecological sort of um, ethos of the, build, of the business, really, you know. Um, but it's one of these things where we want to prove it in the UK first, you know. Once we prove it in the UK, then we can expand it outwards, you know. I want to ask a bit about the pricing because I remember watching the show last week and I think you threw a price out and there was a little bit of like a hesitant, oh, like, wow, yeah. I didn't see that I'm not coming in, in terms of thinking it was a little bit highly priced. How has that gone, you know, across obviously the weeks and months and years of a business, you, you tweak business models, you become more profitable, you chop bits out and stuff. How How is that going for you? Yeah, well, the funny thing was, I mean, after sort of how it was edited, it didn't tell it. It didn't tell it sort of the truth. Sort of, it said, it said uh, this this home office is. It sounded like it cost fourteen thousand pounds. It wasn't that building was actually six and a half, seven thousand pounds, which is still. I'm not, I'm not saying it's. I'm not, I'm not saying it's cheap compared to a shed, but it's not a shed. Yeah. You know, it's a it's a, it's a working unit. You know, it's it's, it's something that you know it's got a lifetime of use. You know, it's got a, it's got a huge resale value. But in the studio, that's what you do a price on the, out in the head for a large garden room, which would be about 14000 And then they cut the price for the larger building and put it against the smaller building. It was like, that didn't happen. That was not the truth, you know. Sort of, uh, so realistically, yes, it's, it's not cheap. But then again, it's not expensive compared to, say, a garden room in wood. And it's got this huge resale value to it, you know, and the reusability and the fact that you can build it bigger or smaller. Mm. And you can take it with you when you're in house, which you can't really do with a, with a wooden garden room, really, you know. Just quickly touching on, on, on Dragons then, uh, you might not be able to say too much, but Paul talks about relationship. I wanted to talk about when you first went in, did you uh, and your colleague have an idea of who you might want to work with and, and who and what kind of gaps were in the business that you might think actually that particular dragon could open up doors here? Yeah, uh, when we went in, we, sort of, we had we knew the two that we didn't want, and the two that we didn't want was... Peter Jones and Tuka Sullivan. We, we sort of knew that, and I'll be honest with you, sort of, we were looking for more of a, a female input because we genuinely, hand on heart, believe that sort of the building industry is massively male dominated. You know, sort of, you know, sort of the, the building industry think, are very proud of themselves, the fact that they've managed to double the number of, of, of female workers in the past decade from 2% to 4%. They believe that's a massive improvement. To me, that's, that's crazy, you know, sort of. We've got a product that anybody can build. It doesn't matter, it doesn't matter sort of if you're disabled. It doesn't matter if you're male, female. The idea is to build a build, sort of, and we want that female perspective. So we want either Sarah, a Deborah from a recycling perspective, or Tej from his overseas perspective. So to get two from three was was, was pretty cool. You know? Did you manage to be, um, pronounce the names okay every time I see me what uh, watch Dragons Den lately to get the pronunciations wrong? Well, I must admit, so, yeah, it was, it was going and said, don't call Deborah Debbie, don't call her Debbie, don't call her Debbie. <laughs> and I did, all, so I did sort of say Sarah rather than Sarah first time, and she didn't realise, luckily. And I went, yeah, 
I, I could let me own head next time, really. You know. Well, she's a local lass. You, you get away with that. Anyway, anyway, yeah. So, but it was it was quite. It was quite obviously, afterwards we, we we got to meet Tej and we got to meet Sarah after we did films, you know. Mm. And uh, it's quick. So, so obviously, it was, it was still filmed under under under, under social distancing rules, my you know. So so we only like so so close to each other. We all have to wear masks and everything else, you know. Yeah. And uh, it was it was strange because obviously I'm from sort of down in Norton on Tees, just sort of um, just near Billingham. So, so where, where you're from, and, and I, I thought she, she lived in in Count and that sort of area. Out in County Durham, you know. She, she went, I live in Winyard. I went, well, I'm from Norton. And it was like, you know, <laughs> the next one, you know. <laughs> so so we started talking quite quickly in northeastly, and poor old Tesla Vani was going. I can't follow this conversation. So, <laughs> you know, his face was because because when when you're from the northeast, you start you start speaking because you you recognise the dialects. You know, mm. the poor guy was like, "I'm not following this conversation <laughs> half as good as I should be." Really, Brin's just just popped something up earlier on there, and he said the uses in disaster zones for temporary shelter and medical facilities is immense. Yeah, it's lightweight too, so it could be transported to remote locations. What we're going to get here is, Gary, is lots of people throwing out different uses for this. And is that what you're finding? That the yeah. people are like, wow, we, I could use this. We could use that there. Yeah. I mean, I mean, sort of, I mean, for all we've gone to the market with the garden rooms, the garden offices, that sort of thing. So, you know, we want people to come to us and sort of say, we could do this with it. We can do that with it. You know, I mean, we, we do realize that there's going to be a huge market there, to be honest. I mean, and, and ironically, so we have actually done a little work with, a, with two companies in Sunderland. Um, uh, dealer contractors in Vero Power, and we built. Um, we call it a solar kiosk, and what it actually is, it's a. Uh, it's one of our little pods that all flat packs down, and on the roof is a huge solar array. And the idea is, it's that it's in, in Africa and and in, the, in developing nations, they, they have mobile phones, but what they don't have is a way to power their mobile phones. So it's almost like they go along with their mobile phone to this kiosk, hand the phone over, get a little chitty, yeah. The, the phone gets charged and then they come back later on and pick the phone up. Uh, and that's something that will work. And so we recognized, so that was one use that we didn't even think there was going to be used. Mm. You know, and that's something which obviously I'll, we'll hopefully put up on social media over the next few weeks, really. You know, that will be, will be um, hopefully going off to Zambia sort of later on in the year, you know, so once we've sort of spoken to a few few more aid agencies as to refining exactly what they want, you know. But sort of we think it'll be schools, we think we'll build schools out there and that sort of thing because. In a forty-foot container, we can fit enough material to to go around a football pitch, um, seven feet high. Wow, you know, that's which is a big number. Mm, you know? It certainly is. See what happens now. Look, we've got Julie Scarve. She's she's going to create a, a dog grooming parlor. Yeah, ideal for that. Perfect. <laughs> if, uh, in fact, Julie, if you go on the website, there's um uh, we have task pods for home. Click on go down there and have a look on, on ogleworld.com. Get my plug in there. If you go down there, we have like a studio option on there, which gives give you some ideas around that really you know but within reason we can build what people want you know because mm. yeah, the principle doesn't really change yeah exactly i mean there's there's our just in there talking about the lab energy team could be interested in the energy use case have, have, you, have you have you done any work around that and uh, we have we worked a little bit with the university of Coventry to establish the i mean sort of the technical terms is, is an r value and a u value the empty walls because it's polystyrene we believe it's somewhere which it's about the same equivalent as a as a normal house double skin brick wall with insulation in the middle it's about the same mm. you know um which is you know fantastic for for its for its weight to heat ratio you know and sound ratio so yeah so that's so that's quite good i think overall you know what what does business development look like gary then so you you're talking to people do you do you rock in with you with you literally you've got those bits of samples in your hand there do you do you play videos the art of the possible how does it work um well, at the minute, so we haven't really, we haven't done one bit of marketing. Right, okay. You know, so we've done a little bit of social media because we were in a rush to sort of get our new product out and some videos done for Dragons then coming out because, because, because we knew we wanted to improve the product anyhow and get the price down a little bit and a few other things, you know. So what we're, what we're doing now is is we're going to sort of, some, some of these 600,000, we're going to try, try and fulfill some of those orders over the next sort of two or three months. So that moving that on. What we are doing is also building with the ethos of the company quite a lot is we're crowdfunding. We, we, we crowdfund in August, and we've started an expressions of interest page because because what we would like is you know we, we recognise the fact that we need to invest to then expand further and make it bigger and everything else because everything so far has been pretty much paid for by myself and and, and a couple of small European grants you know sort of and in the nicest possible way so I haven't got a lot more money to plow into it from that respect I've got, I've got the product to market you know so we now need to take it to the next step really 
um, which and we went okay. Well, what fits our what fits our ethos? Crowdfunding fits our ethos, you know. So if, if we wanted to raise say hundred hundred thousand pounds, we'd rather have ten thousand ten pound investors rather than one hundred thousand pound investor because we want everyone to be part of it. I mean, for example, if you bought one share, mm-hmm. so if you're going to you're going to tell everybody that you bought one share, and it, it starts conversation off, you know. So and then it's obviously we'll offer you know discounts to shareholders and that sort of thing anyhow, you know. And what, what we want to do is create our tribe, create the people who are into what we're doing, you know. And a lot of people are into the ecology yeah. element of it, the, the waste plastic element of it. They're into the homework element of it. They're into the, the disaster relief and the and all the, all these elements. That sort of it, so it fits it ticks those boxes in people's own heads. So the next step is how can we get people involved? You know, well, start as an investor, start, so, and then be a purchaser of the the product, and it all just starts to sort of perfect outward outwards really. You know, but yeah, we start by selling. We start in essence. We, we start by selling over the next few weeks. So is is the crowdfund alive, Gary? What it is, it's, a, it's a, an expression of interest stage. So, okay. so it'll launch in early August, but people are allowed to sort of go on. If they go on the website, overworld.com, mm-hmm. there's a page on there that says uh, Invest Like a Dragon. There's a page on there. It shows a little video of where we are now with all the new stuff that we're doing. Wonderful. Uh, it shows the new the new buildings. Um, and then people can just put down that. I'm interested in investing £10, £1,000, whatever they're interested in investing in. Really, you know. Great. So... Yeah, a, a share will certainly do me. I'll, I'll I'll sort that out, and obviously I'll get a free T-shirt as well. Naturally, that goes out soon. Justin's mentioning uh, a friend of ours, Chris. Chris is is a, um, a wonderful product that he is also thinking about taking out into Africa. Um, right. Global teacher. It's a, I might do a disservice here, but it's a projector which is fully loaded with um, education materials. Right, and he wants to get these out in, into Africa and. and obviously help uh, educate out there wonderful wonderful lad yes so yeah good call justin yes yeah, so I've, I've, I've just made no chris's name there so I've, I've just could ping that under me he's, he's connected i don't get his connected details all there but yeah that, that's it's only sort of things that we you know sort of we recognize that there's a lot of i mean we've got, got to be a little bit careful to find us a little bit too thin from a mm, of course yeah you know, perspective you know but we do want to sort of investigate things and then once we sort of make a case for it you know, sort of move on and, because we do believe a large part of what we sort of do is you know is is is, is the humanitarian bit because that was that's one of the influences behind what we're doing in the first place you know yeah and, and environmental piece as well we've got a great comment here somebody talking about a material scientist in kenya who's making bricks from washed up plastics on their shores yeah it's because it, it's, it's that sort of thing but the, the one problem with making a brick shape is you've still got to be able to sort of join the brick to the brick yeah yeah. So you see, so you need some sort of cement to join the two together, which is, you know, which I fully get, and I'm fully on board with it, and I love it to bits. But unless you sort of solve how you join the two pieces together, then you haven't ultimately solved the problem. You know. Yeah. Yeah. Hence, when you were going obviously into the the L shape and that sort of thing, to, yeah. into the concept of it. Paul looks like he's keen as well. I'm, I might get a bit of commission out of this one. Yeah. How quickly could you build a garden office? How long would it take from placing an order to having it built? Roughly six to eight weeks. Uh, it may be a shade longer at the minute, because not because of the building, funnily enough, but because we can't get hold of windows and doors at the minute, because everybody's absolutely crazy. So oh, wow. There, there was a shortage of glass in the UK, would you believe? So, we, so, so you have a full building with a door and a window in it, but just no glass, which is kind of, <laughs> kind of pointless, isn't it? You know? So just leading on from Paul's point there, um, so could Paul buy it himself and do a DIY, or, 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 or do you bring a team in? Bit of both. Initially, this year we'll be sort of send, sending a team in, but then again, so sort of we're we're a firm believer of come along and sort of help help us build it, see how it's built, you know, because then people can go. Well, I saw it getting built, and I and I, I had the screwdriver in my hand, and I, I, I did a I did a course myself. I understand it, you know. It's one of these where when people do the first bit of it, they go, they understand it. It takes five. I mean, my my daughter can. I taught my daughter how to build. Funny with a, a dog kennel, we have we have a dog kennel that that we use as an example of how we how we do it, and it's, a, it's sort of it's a, we call the dog it's a dog house, so we call it an dog house. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But the principle of building a dog house is the same principle of building a house. Nothing changes, yeah. but it helps that process to go. Well, I'm going to teach you how to build a dog house, and then when, when you build a dog house, the, how you build a dog house is the same as you build a real house, just. To, just a matter of, of larger bits and a bit higher. Thinking about the um, projections, and I don't know if you've done any projections going forward for, for the business. Have you got Have you got any figures that you that you're aiming some targets? Yeah, um, this year, I mean this year we'll, t- we'll probably do about a quarter of a million pounds in turnover, um, which is which isn't huge, but it's all building towards next year really, mm-hmm. because what we want to do 
is bring the, the fabric the manufacturing fabrication is currently done in Worcester by by Alan's team in Worcester because there's, there's, there's nowhere there's nowhere in the northeast there's nowhere in the UK that could, that could build extrusion that large in that material and, and we've worked very really, very hard with Ram but we recognize the fact that we're going to over 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 overwhelm their production facilities over the, over the next six to eight six to eight months so the idea is is that we want to sort of bring that back to the northeast which is which is partly for the crowd fund as well you see is sort of say okay right we won't we need to invest in machinery we need to sort of, which means we're going to get asset finance we've got to prove the business model with what we've currently got by by alan making things by contract manufacturer but the ultimate aim is we want it to, it's that in the northeast we want it to perk it out from the northeast and you're going to be obviously staying in this building because you, you're just above me just, really. just above you. yeah yeah so i'm stamping the floor there you go. <laughs> <laughs> here in south tyneside and we we love new businesses that spring out of south tyneside as well because our ecosystem and our network's just amazing so and, and, and thinking about that are you looking for investors? You, I know you mentioned before about having a bunch of investors with a smaller amount. What if, what if someone come in, Gary, with a bit of weight behind them? Don't know yet. I don't sort of. I'm very conscious about things such as you know, sort of control of the company, mm -hmm. of the direction. So you, you, you so people have got to buy the values of the company. The fact that yes, we think we'll do very very well out of it, but the idea is not to make another billionaire out of me uh, so sort of, the world's got the world's got enough billionaires the world's got enough very rich people so the idea is to sort of say okay whilst whilst, whilst we, we are a, a for-profit company we have a lot of the east of a community-led company we're not a charity what we want to do, want to do is take the different elements of what we can do and sell the garden rooms the garden offices on a commercial basis that will then help fund the, the or help towards funding the homeless shelters and the, the, the disaster relief Plowsing that profit back into there rather than into a new Ferrari, you know. Yeah, so I think what we're saying there is then if an investor was going to come on board, they need to have the same values the business was, was founded on. Exactly. I mean, there's nothing wrong with making money, absolutely nothing wrong with that at all, and, and it'll, pay a good, it'll pay a very, very good dividend. But it's the recognition that we have different elements. We have, you know, so sort of, we've been having very initial um, conversations with the people who handle the um, R&D for, for the military. You know, sort of, because obviously there's a, there's a military application for it, you know, as well as humanitarian. But we would like to sort of charge the military full price to then subsidise a little bit what we sort of do for the uh, humanitarian shelters or that sort of thing, you know. But still make money, still still do very well, but everything else, still, still pay good dividends. But we believe in the longer term, that helps people buy in the values of the company and it makes the company stronger overall, you know. You touched upon patents. How How's that process been for you? Yeah, um, well, when we went in the programme, we were patent pending for US, China, UK and Europe. We've just had notification two weeks ago that we have the patent um, about to be granted in the US. Mm -hmm. And the objection from the European patent office and the Chinese office was was, a, was the fact that there was only a US patent that they believed looked similar. It didn't look anything similar at all, you know. So, so now we've dealt with the US problem. That, that will then help us, well, it will solve the, US, the European problem and the Chinese problem. Yeah, which, are, which aren't even problems anyhow, you know. Sort of, um, uh, but that's that, so. So they should be they should be through the next next three months, really. You know, and and is that sort of some of the things that have been keeping you busy in the organisation? You know, going through the bits of paperwork and patents and things like that. Yeah, that, that's it is quite time consuming doing that sort of thing. I mean, we we do have patent attorneys, but there's a lot of background work has to go into mm. giving them the information to then move forward. But, I mean, I mean, what we really have been concentrating on since since Dragon Stem was. How can we make the product better? How can we make it a little bit cheaper? How can we make it more efficient? How can we make it so it packs even tighter? So, that, so it's that product development really. And now that's all. That's all complete. That's all done. Now, now we're at market. You know, now it's you know, but we are literally at market as of three or four weeks. So, who do you need in the business, Gary, to work, to work with? What re where is the gaps? Where's the resource gaps? Skills? Where the resource gaps? Well, we we we. We've taken on a, a, a social media type person, sort of a PR type person, because we don't. So we believe people will come to us, sort of to a certain degree. So it's getting the the, the SEO, the Facebook, because it is a visual product. So it's, it's, it's quite tactile. The values are quite um, social media friendly, should we say? Say in that respect. Obviously, with the sales that we've currently got in, I need, I need to bring an admin person in because at the minute there's me and the young lady who comes in this week. That because as you can imagine, there's been I've been quite busy just doing just doing course the last last week. Mm -hmm. you know? So I need to sort of that will, uh, will allow me to, to move on to like business development, and then obviously when we bring production up here, there'll be operational staff and managerial staff to manage the actual factory facility. Mm. You know, it's a little bit of a little bit of admin to be, sort of the next 
two or three weeks, two or three months, if you, if you like, a PR, well, I say, I say PR, social media awareness type person working on that. Because we, we, we recognise that what's going to be one of our best models is going to be talk to companies who sort of, you know, if we talk to, say, a larger law, law firm, for example, and sort of say, look, you can financially, it makes sense to downsize your office, have guys come in two or three days a week and work from home two or three days a week, because that's, you know, you only have to be into it. Sort of, so there's got to be a certain degree of that, that B2B sale. Mm. Um, because it makes sense from financial, it makes sense from the fact from, from, from employer retention. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, because so sort of people have now got in, in that you know, sort of in, in my mind, rightly so, that there's no reason to be in the office five days a week or six days a week. You know, mm. home life is very, very important. People have now realised that you know, not leaving the house at seven o'clock in the morning, come back at seven at night, is okay for some days, but not but not every day. It's interesting because we initially, I think, we touched upon, you know, B to C. I think Dragon's Den talked about it being a DIY product and that sort of stuff. But now what we're talking about there is then business to business. Yeah. You know, you've got lots of um, staff working from home. Could we supply them with, with somewhere to work? Yes. I mean, Jim's just popped up again there saying about, you know, mini clean rooms. You know, everyone's coming up with these great ideas. Yes. And and, and these, from a, from a grown ogle point of view is, you're going to be starting to sell tens, twenties of these rather than the, the business to consumer ones where it's one for someone's garden. Yes. But what's your thoughts on that? Yeah, I mean, I mean, we do recognize that, that that's where it's going to go. But what we sort of said was to begin with, let's 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 go retail, let's sell to the end user, because the end user is going to be really honest with you okay. about what they want, what they liked, what they didn't like. You know, getting that feedback is it's so valuable. But somebody spending the hard-earned cash on something that they want for their garden, they want it to be the best possible. So, and you know, so and we want it to be the best possible for them. And that that feedback drives what we do for the B two B offering. It's 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 more financial rather than well, our function function and financial play a part. But the aunt is, is um, bothered about the the fine details. You know, so we we'd rather get the fine details and the building and the price all together. So there's the whole package. This, there's, there's no objection that you can have to this, to this product, you know. I want the fine details, Gary. I want it wrapped. Can you wrap it for us in some like funky camo or something? We do wrap it. So if you go, if you go on the video, so we do have a building that's fully wrapped. That's what we do. Yeah. So that's, that's the idea is that we, you know, because what, what we recognize is that that's part of the, from the gardener's perspective is these buildings all look quite the same, you know. Mm. But once you wrap it, it's totally individual, you know. So it's, it's if you think about the, the whole world is covered in tattoos, because everybody, everybody wants to be an individual in a collective. Well, so, so it's a it's a standard building, a, a, a fair standard building, but it's totally individual to you. There's no reason why you can't have your picture on the outside of that building if you if you are that way inclined. I'm not that way inclined, but <laughs> <laughs> you know, but something like that, you know, sort of it's yeah. Well, I, I think we've got another sale there. Eddie's going to bring this in. He's knocking out the company cars now. That's it. Now we're going to have little units working from home. Yeah. <laughs> And seems to like the, the the I think I think Anne likes the uh, the, the dog grooming parlor bit. Anne, I didn't speak to Anne because some of Anne's work we we like to take some of Anne's work and put, put it on as a, as a wrap on the building. Oh wow, that would be so cool. We think that would look really cool. You know, yeah, definitely. That. And and thank you, Anne. I've got a lovely gift on my wall from Anne, a nice little visual display of my business. So thank you very much. You see the network we've got absolutely wonderful, and isn't it really nice to lean into some of these friends and sort of ask for advice and things. Yeah, and, and the thing is, I mean, I mean, that's one thing I'll, I'll, I'll say as a northeast as a whole. So, sort of, I mean, obviously, I'm I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm from Teesside originally. You know, sort of the actual people want you to succeed. Absolutely. Mm. You know, so sort of, it's like I've been spoken to so and so, I've spoken to so and so, and people genuinely, hand on heart, want everybody else to succeed. There's no, there's no sort of nastiness. I mean, even companies that are in, in competition, I've, I've watched conversations. You're going, well, you're. You're, you're, a law firm, you're a law firm, you're a law firm, law firm, but you realise that there's enough work to go around. If you sort of do it correctly, then there's enough work for everybody. It certainly is. It's completely unlike the Southeast. It's completely unlike the Southeast. Isn't it? <laughs> well, we're nearly on the hour mark. I mean, that's, I told you it would fly. Yeah, it's, it is, jeez, 11 o'clock. Yeah. 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 It's been great. And we've had some great 
interaction, some great comments. You, there's a lot of interest, Gary. And just like you just touched upon there, people want to see you succeed. They, they love the business. They love the product. It's a really exciting product. You know, people are talking about it from, from their own point of view, like Sir Paul there. And yeah. uh, I, I think I've sold about seven units so yeah. far in, in the hour. So, um, you know, I, I do work in sales. I am open yeah. to yeah, yeah. any commission and offers. Of course, <laughs> Well, at the end of the day, Ian, you've, um, you, you've worked your magic, you've, you've, you've brought everything along. And, yes, a pop glass, so it's, it's, it's a large coffee or a small coffee? Um, always large, <laughs> always large. <laughs> And there's our invest team there. Thanks for the questions. Yes, it was. It was a really inspiring talk. Anyone interested in joining the Ogle tribe? There's the link, Ogle World. That's much less than it. Thanks, Invest South Town, sir. That's brilliant. Yeah. Of course, of the people that come in early, sort of get a, a better deal than the people that come in later on the crowdfund. So, yeah. So, uh... I like his style. Nicely done. So, Gary, thanks so much again for your time. Really enjoyed it. Uh, I'm looking for, I'll be watching this journey with, with interest. We all will. And uh, and I'm sure you're excited for where this is going to take you because uh, that's the interesting bit, isn't it? Yeah, the, the journey is fun. The journey is definitely fun. Don't be wrong. So, there's, this, there's, there's, there's nights I wake up and go, God, the, the anxiety, like, sort of. You know, so it's it's a concern, you know, because it's 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 a bit like sort of a bit like Bob Geldof. Sort of, Bob Geldof said, said before before live, he, he sort of woke up at like three in the morning thinking, will people turn up? <laughs> you know, you know. And now, like, oh, I'm, I'm realizing people are starting to turn up, but I still get that anxiety. Yeah. Know? Well, that, that's great. Lean into that. That's the exciting bit. And there's my eighth sale. There's our Jeanette there. Jeanette wants one as well uh, from, from, from Just Breathe, a wonderful lady. So there's number eight. Thank you, eight. Jeanette. <laughs> right then, Gary, I'm going to let you go. Thank you so much. Hey, and uh, maybe let's get you on again once. Yeah, I'd, I'd love to. So whenever you want, Ian. It was great chat. Cheers, Gary. You take care. Cheers, mate. Bye-bye. Well, there was Gary. How cool was that? And everyone's excited about this product. It is. It is good, especially when you can wrap it. Those would look great at the bottom of your garden, wouldn't they? Chris did talk about plumbing it in as well. So maybe you could plumb in a little bit of a bar area. Hmm. Uh, thank you again for watching. We were hoping to get these live. That that would be so cool, wouldn't it? In, in, in person again. Um, please stay safe. Uh, I hope you and your family are, are safe and well. Thank you so much for all your comments. It's been great, really great interaction today. I thoroughly enjoyed it. Great for a Friday morning. If you are watching on Catch Up, you know, click the share button. If you uh, if you think somebody else might enjoy this, give us some love as well. You know, get the love in there. And we look forward to seeing you on the next business talk. Make it a great weekend and thanks for watching.